to send you also a, a copy mm. yeah, yeah that's because right. uh, I'm getting it and he's getting it but you know, I, I can't check my email up there yeah. and uh, your wife is getting it my dad yeah. mm -hmm. but I think it'd be a good idea mm -hmm. you also had it Okay. The problem I have with this is it avoids this steep section going here, but uh -huh. then I don't know what we'll encounter here. Yeah. We could have cornices and crevasses. Mm -hmm. This was nasty. From here to here was yeah. nasty. And my only concern about this will be a shorter climb, climb to yeah. get to the ridge line, but then we, we don't know what this is going to be. In. Yeah. That's what worries me. This looks steeper than this. Yeah. Do you think it, it, it is st steeper? I, I, I don't know. It, it could be. I, I I assumed it would not be steeper. This was was pretty vertical. But then we had all these issues in here, and I'm, my only concern is this will make it probably easier to get up on the line. But then we're have to. so what we'll do is uh, on the on the day we'll see if Shara can get to the. Um, um, get to the ridge, mm -hmm. okay. and he'll have a look at the ridge. Now, if this is as gnarly as the upper section, then it's better. Villages just outside of Luka on the way up to Fakting. It's awfully pretty up here in the autumn.
This is my favorite suspension bridge. On the way up to Amtrak Bazaar. There's Namche Bazaar. This is our first view of Mount Everest on the trekking trail to Everest Base Camp. You can see the summit triangle there in the middle of the video. And over to the right is the famous mountain of Ama de Blom, Jewel of the Himalaya. So we'll be following this trekking trail you see here around the bend ahead of us there, past that stupa. And then down that hill, we'll make a left turn to go up to Portse, and then from there to Dole. Beautiful bluebird day. This is the path to Portse Tanga. We're at Dolly. There is Brookong. The middle of the screen.
This is the trucking trail to Gokyo. Straight ahead you see the magnificent Chouyu. We are at Gokyo Lake, almost to the village. This is the beautiful turquoise Gokyo Lake. There is Gokyo with Troy Oyu in the background. This is the lake. And this is Gokyo Ri Mountain, which we climbed yesterday. You can barely see the flag on top of it. This is the summit of Gokyo Ri. This is the massive Naksumba Glacier and straight up that way you pass Gokyo Lake number four and then Gokyo Lake number five is where we will set up a camp. And then from there we have to cross this glacier and head up the Guanara Glacier which you can see straight away. Left side mountain is Pasanglamo Peak which is located 7,000 meter and the middle one is Choyu and then the white one, right, uh, left one is Tenjing and right one is Hilari Peak. And then the black rocky one is Gechungkang. And Ngozumba Glacier. There's a great view of Mount Everest. We're trekking up to Gupio Lake number five. Here's our camp at Gokyo Lake number five. This is not what we're calling base camp. Bill is also ready to crossing. I my top sir, lumse. You must you must come to take care of the children. Oh, what is that? You brought the Uh, 
Last year we repelled that with the figure eight repeller. This year by hand, a little harder, but I had some help. Exciting. And we're down. Let these guys do it. Way at the top, you see a couple of our team members coming down. Here's gives David. A, gives you a perspective of how far down we came. Huh? Sure does. It's like rappelling down into the Grand Canyon. Yeah, absolutely. Only no rappel. <laughs> We're ready to crossing Muzumba Glacier with the nice weather. Bill, you okay? Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Tired. Little bit, yeah. We're in the middle of the glacier right now. It's Naga right up there. This is tough climbing. Well done, well done. Uh, thank you. The most fish across the glacier. There is base camp and Burkong. So our kitchen tent, dining tent. Yeah. Making us lunch. Ready for lunch, David? Yeah, ready for lunch. Uh... Here's the team, about ready to move. Do a carry up the mountain, fix some lines. Got the best team in the world here. Yes, yes, See you soon. Be safe. Beautiful mountain. Here we come. So the three Sherpas are up there 
fixing lines up the cooler which is below here to get up on the ridge line in the snow field. When, once they do that they'll come down tonight and we'll be ready to go in a couple of days to start moving up. So beautiful up here. Naga? Sonam? Sure. Hard day work. Fixing lines up to camp one. You left What time is it now, David? It's 10 past 7. So it's 10 past 7 now and they left about clear to 6 a.m. Unbelievably hard work. Almost 13 hours. ขอเจสันลอกเดนนะบอกขอเจอขอเจสันกุศลเชื่อมขอเจสันมุกติงเกลมูเชียงอาสันพอเดนละมูขอเจดูมาเมสันขอเจสันเดเบนสมจูขอ
This hill gets gets bigger every time. <laughs> Congratulations! Great to see you back. Thanks, Bill. We tried, but uh, just too dangerous. Well, it's nice when the mountain puts up a fight. Oh, and it was a big one. <laughs> it was two days trying to get through there. <sighs> Welcome back, everybody. Hi, Bill. I got, got to shake your hand. Great job. You are so great. Love you guys so much. Hi. Hi. Great job, Sarah. Proud of you. Here's Sanam. Hello. <laughs> Great job, Sanam. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I live in Solukumbu, Kumjung. I'm working Asian trekking uh, since 27 years ago. Uh, I'm mountaineering and trekking guide. And what kinds of mountains have you climbed, Naga, or guided on? Uh, yeah, I climbed mostly uh, over 8,000 meter height, like Choyu, Shishapangma, uh, and Mount Everest, south side and north side, um, and Hoche, and many other peaks. Okay, and can you describe Burkong and how this climb went and how Burkong compares to other mountains that you've climbed? Yeah, it's uh, different. And Rokos? Like uh, another mountain. Uh, this is this mountain is a hidden mountain, and get here is also very uh, hidden. We have to pass hidden valley to get a base camp, and uh, it's uh, very interesting to climb this mountain to get one uh, Kemuan, uh, which is located Tibet and Nepal borderline, and then. Uh, climb up to camp to uh, but this time uh, between camp one and camp two just below camp two it was uh, big big crevasses so that was we could not pass to get camp two that was we we are uh, no way to get up so that was we came down this year. 
So would you consider this a fairly difficult mountain, a technical mountain? Well, uh, sometime, uh, I think sometime uh, nut grabbers, but this year uh, just below Camp 2 it was a big, big grabbers, so no way to get up. So I, I think uh, yeah, some some section a rocky part, but some section is uh, flat, but uh, many many crevasses. Well, Naga, you did a wonderful job with our group here, and I want to thank you so much. This is a beautiful, beautiful part of the country. Uh, how would you describe the Gokio Valley? Very beautiful up here. Yeah, no 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 trekkers. We are only two uh, two clients and. Uh, we are five uh, five Nepalese staffs. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Nobody else is here. Just yeah, us. Yeah, it's a very quiet and very uh, wonderful place here. Uh, I was born in Mexico. I'm 36 years old, and uh, I've been spending a lot of time in the U.S. in the last last uh, six years in Seattle. So I have a place there. I, I go back and forth, but uh, yeah, I think Mexico is home for me. And how did you get into the world of adventure? And could you tell me something about uh, some of your most fun or challenging adventures over the years? Um, I, I was I was born into a family that uh, was uh, doing adventures uh, since I was born. Uh, I think uh, the first time I went to a, a trip like that, it w I was uh, three months old. My parents took me to a scuba diving trip on an island in the Gulf of Mexico. So uh, it's since then I've been doing all kinds of of, uh, of interesting adventures and sports. I mean, I, I, I learned to scuba dive when I was five years old, and uh, I started climbing when I was 13. Started climbing with my dad. He was not a climber, but we we took a mountaineering course in, in Mexico uh, together, and. Um, since then, I've climbed all over the world, and uh, I've been lucky to uh, summit a couple of peaks with with Bill. So that's 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 a good. Uh, <laughs> that, and you've done paragliding uh, and sailing. Oh yeah, and you're quite you're quite the adventurer. Long dad. distance sailing, paragliding. I do that a lot. Um, adventure racing, and uh, I, I I don't consider my, myself a climber. I, I try to keep a balance in all the things that I do, and uh, I'm just I'm very happy when I get to do. Uh, um, new things uh, every time. And what was your overall impression, David, of this adventure? And did it live up to your expectation? By this adventure, I mean uh, the attempt to climb Burk Kong. Um, uh, we are in a very remote area, and uh, even though I've climbed peaks in pretty remote areas, n n never as, as uh, remote as this. So just getting away from everything has been amazing. Uh, the, the peak itself. It's 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 uh, such a great challenge. Uh, you have a huge head wall to get up to Camp One, and then ridges, and uh, ice falls. You have everything uh, in in uh, Burk Kang, and having a, a small expedition as as we have, I think, made a huge difference. Uh, I, I I like it better this way. The flexibility uh, we have, and um, it's it's too bad that we couldn't make it up uh, up there this time. Uh, but uh, I mean, uh, just just having a small group. I think we we uh, worked together to uh, try to make it happen. We did our best, but we, we couldn't get to the summit. And how would you compare uh, Burkhan to your other big mountain climbs like Everest? Was it uh, was it a little more technical or more challenging? Uh, uh, how how would you compare it if you could? Well, um, first thing is uh, I I don't think there's a straightforward uh, route for for this mountain. So it took us a while uh, to to find the best way to get up to uh, to Camp One. So there's no evident uh, uh, best route, and um, also I was surprised by how steep the head wall to Camp One is. Um, one of the most interesting mountains I've climbed is Amadoulam, and uh, just just getting up to Camp One is more challenging challenging I think than getting to the summit of uh, of Amadoulam. So uh, definitely a, a, a unique challenge, uh, uh, Burk Kang. And how far up the mountain were the lines fixed when you got up there, David? Um, when I 
Uh, well, first uh, I went to Camp One, I spent an, uh, a night there. Uh, the Sherpa went up the next day to, to try to make their way to Camp Two, and uh, they could only go up to sixty, sorry, to six thousand four hundred meters, uh, uh, about that altitude, and um, that's uh, that's how far they went and how far we went uh, uh, the next day, uh, trying to look for a, a way to get to Camp Two. And what conditions did you see above C1 that caused you to feel that uh, this expedition uh, has to be uh, uh, canceled? What well, was the reason why um, it wasn't? It didn't make any sense to continue well, trying to move the, up. Well, the the ridge uh, to Camp Two was uh, full of cornices, some pretty big cornices on, on top, maybe uh, ten feet long. So we had to be very careful with that, not 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 not, uh, not reaching too much towards the towards the edge. But when we got to the top of the ridge, we we got to an ice fall uh, where we could see where last year's expedition went through. But unfortunately, uh, it, it was impossible for us to take the the, the same route through the uh, through the ice fall and the the, the snow bridge. That uh, they used last year was just just too fragile. Uh, I mean, a small amount of weight would have collapsed it. Uh, it was pretty evident. Um, we looked for alternate uh, routes around that ice fall, and uh, it, it was it was just uh, impossible. And one thing that I did a couple of times was uh, uh, just just getting on the rope and being uh, belayed and uh, stepping out on the ridge and uh, on the edge of the ice fall, looking for. For way around that that, uh, that uh, problem, but um, as uh, one of the Sherpa said to me, um, I fear for my life, and uh, I think it would be foolish not to listen to them. Uh, so at that point, uh, we we made the decision to uh, to turn back. That's great. And last uh, question, you're involved in a charity in India, and I wonder if you could tell us about that and what we can do if we're interested in helping uh, to help. Uh, since last year, I've been involved with the, the Live, Love, Lab Foundation based in, in India. And, um, uh, I mean, why India? <laughs> uh, India is, is uh, the country with the highest uh, uh, suicide rate in the world. And uh, there's a huge stigma attached to, uh, to mental health uh, problems uh, over there. And um, since it's an issue that's been around in my family, I've, I've been... Um, been uh, very active with it since, uh, since uh, last year and, uh, and uh, well the, the, the main goal is trying to remove that stigma and raise awareness uh, and just just tell people that it's okay to to uh, get help if they have a mental health issue and uh, that uh, they can get well and they, they can get treated like with any other uh, disease so um, I think the best way to su support the foundation is just just uh, being close with the people around you, being uh, uh, active, and um, uh, ask questions about how they're, how they're doing, and uh, just be have an open mind and, and uh, be welcoming if they have a problem and try to try to help them. And um, yeah, this this was a climb for mental health awareness. The, the foundation's website is uh, the Live Love Lab Foundation org. And uh, you can find a lot of useful information if you're going through uh, uh, mental health issues or if somebody close to you is going through, through uh, mental health problems. And uh, there's also um, uh, an option to uh, donate, but there's a lot of useful information. So I would really recommend people to uh, look into it. Well, thank you, David. You are a great friend. I want to thank you right here and now for being such a great friend. Going way back, we've done a lot of things together, including this. And I'm so proud of you and all of you you've accomplished in your life. It's just amazing what one person can do if they put their mind to it and their, their will to it and their spirit and if they've got family support and friend support. And you're the epitome of that. So I consider you a great friend and I, and I thank you for joining me on this wonderful journey up here. This is a beautiful country, isn't it? It's, it's amazing, Bill. And thank you for the kind words. I think uh, you, you're... You're the reason why we're here. Uh, this mountain was uh, named after you, and uh, you're the spirit of this of this expedition. So uh, you've been a great leader. Thank you for uh, having us here, uh, and uh, I, hopefully this, this will, will not be the last adventure that we share together. And uh, I'm sure there will be more. Thank you, David, and God bless you and your family.